Hi students. So this is lecture two in week four, day three. Okay, so whereas in lecture one, we taught you how to quote and paraphrase, this time we focus on how to cite the information. So this is citing the source. So remember lecture one, we have quoting and paraphrasing or summarizing. Lecture two, this is our current lecture. We're talking about citing sources. Now, the key to all this is that we have different sources. So we have different rules to cite different sources. But the goal is the same. You want to cite the sources and you want to cite them in two places. An APA style, where to cite? Well, there are two places. First, it's called your in-text citation. And where that is, is in your essay. So, everything from lecture one, you are actually using in-text citation. So that's place number one. What we will help you in this lecture is the reference section. Or in this case, since you're working with multiple sources, that's references. So this is at the end of your paper. I'm going to use paper for your project and I'm going to use essay for your argument. Okay, so when you are citing sources here, remember in lecture two, we're focusing on references. But don't forget, when you cite sources in APA, there are always two places. First, in text citations in the essay itself two in the references at the end of the paper and when you cite references the type of source is important but this goal is the same you are citing the source you are recognizing the author's idea or info and you're telling the reader who and what and what is being what is being cited where they can find it when they when they wrote it and so on so the rest of this lecture now is going to help you how to understand and practice how to cite different sources so to review this is from lecture one So we quote or paraphrase. And this is your in-text citation. An in-text citation means you are citing in the essay. Okay, so here you still need information. So this is where I'm getting you to do your research proposal. The more information you collect and the more accurate and detailed you are, these are going to be useful for you. So the title, the author, the year published, the publisher, and the city or location that is being published. And so there's a bonus question that I'll ask you later, later, but all of these pieces of information is going to be important for your in-text citation. Well, Remember which ones we need? We need the title, sometimes, but we always need the author and the year. Who and it's the who, and then the when, and then here we have the what. 
the publisher and the location. These are for your references. These are for your in-text citation. Title, author, and year. And the bonus question. See if you remember what else do we need? What question would we ask? So we got who, we got when, we got the what. Do you remember the last one? We need the where. So we're going to want the page number. All right, so I'll show you what that looks like. Again, to review. Here is an example. First, you see here we have a quote. Because we got quotation marks. And we have the author here. We have the book here. We have the quote here. And then we have the page number. That's the where. Do you see anything that's missing? Well, we're missing the when right now. And we need that. So if you remember from the previous slide, oh, it's written in 1988. So if you include everything, here you have the author, and Charlotte Brown is actually the character. Not the author. Author is Fraser. And then you have the year. And then you have the page number. And because it's a quote, quotes always need page numbers. Always use page numbers for quotes. Okay, make sure you have the who, the when, and the where for sure and you can always include the title of the book in the sentence that's okay too again make sure you have the who what when and where in your citation so always cite who that's the author when that's the year where that's the page number and this is in-text citation by the way in APA and you can always include the title so again who is the author when is the year where is the page number and what is the title always include these in your in-text citation with references you're going to need more and quotes, especially for quotes, you have where. All right, let's try another one. See if you can get it this time. We read another quote. Again, we have the author. This time is, we picked the author this time, not the character. We'll skip Charlotte. Okay. We have the title of the book we have the quote here okay we have still a big quote big quote it starts here with still and ends with jane pie jane Eyre. okay we have the title again all right so we have the page number again what's missing well we're missing again the year now this time, because we already have the author, we have the title, we have the page number, and we're missing the year, this is a method one. And I'll show you what that means. With method one from your previous one, it's like the author X says dot dot dot, dot and then your big quote here. So this is method one, if you remember from your quoting paraphrasing, which means X, you need the year. 
after the author and then since you're quoting you have the page number like that okay again you would have the who the author doesn't matter which method you have the when that's the year yep you have the what the author the title again it's safe to include that and then finally the where especially for quotes the page number at the end okay um, if it's not part of a sentence use brackets so here the year is not part of the sentence you have that in brackets and then the page number is not part of the sentence you don't say oh um, Fraser describes in page 262 you could but that's a waste of words you just use the bracket and cite it as a page number instead okay now this section usually in the lectures I have been skipping the references this time I'm actually going to talk about it because this is important you're going to need to learn how to do this so in your assignment one and two you're copying and paste in all your assignments now you are going to write it or type it so which means I'm going to teach you these parts and you're going to learn how to write it so instead of saying how to do this you're going to learn to how to write these references so think of this references list as a traveling address list it tells you where to find the source exactly find each source and this is a book so a book has a particular set of directions but the key parts are there you have the author now notice here is an R that's the initial I explained that so here you have the last name and then any initials those are for given names so for example my name is Angus that's the name I gave myself but I have my legal name King Chi in Cantonese and then my last name Chan so I underline my last name and all these are my initials A K and C the first letter of each given name so in APA I write my last name first comma and I stick with the initials I use the order the same order a dot k dot c if I were to use my full name usually I just go with Angus Chan so my last name Chan comma a like that so that's the first part the author in APA you put brackets and then the year and then a dot the dots and commas are important notice the next part this is the title so the title of the book so I'm going to underline to say that it's in italics but you can press the I button for that make sure you do and this is important for books and if you have any questions about these you can always check the APA citation guide on the same set of materials for today's lecture okay and check this out for more info all right the next part here we have the location so in your location it is the city and then well in this case it's the state in Canada would be the province but here this is the location location of the publisher and then finally the name of the publisher itself so you put semicolon that matters too and then you have the publisher 
and this is missing here you would have the page range which means let's say if the quote was from page 75 so this is and but then you read from let's say page 676 to 79 I'll use an example here so you put pp.76 to 79 as an example okay so notice I made up the numbers but here we don't have page numbers for quotes so again no page numbers the first quote in the essay it tells you the exact page number 37 so you can find this quote in page 37 the next quote from the same book is from page say 262 that's where you find this book and if you were to put in the page range you put pp oh let's say you read much of the book and you would do that so the page range tells you all the pages that you read and it will include and so the quote the pages from that you quoted from that's going to be in there as well okay so remember the parts okay you have the author with initials you have the year you have the title in italics you have the publisher location and you have the publisher now remember the parts matter so you're going to have author remember for example you're going to have the last name and then any initials i'm telling you this twice so you're going to have a better chance of remembering these year is pretty simple put it in brackets and the dot title is going to be in italics the location is going to be city and let's say state and then the publisher is going to be the full name of the publisher and you're going to have a page range for books books have pages therefore you must tell them which pages you found them in all right the next type of source you are going to be using and you definitely use these uh, is journal articles well, there's two versions one is print That means you have a paper copy of it. And the other one is an online database. Both are very similar because they have different similar parts. For example, you have the author. You're going to need that. You have the article title. You're going to need that too pages you need that the issue of the journal the year so that's your when the pages that's your where the title that's your what your author that's your who okay volume is part of the when as well and as part of the where an extra part this time because this is an article in a journal there's like different stories in magazines you're going to have a storage a database to store all the journals all the all the articles and it's cataloged it's grouped by different years issues and volumes so the volume the year and the issue Grouping all these together is going to give you the reference that you are going to need.
So in journal articles, you're going to need the author. Again, remember authors, they have last names and then the initials. Okay, and then you have the year in brackets and a dot. Here you have the article title. Now this time notice the article title is not in italics, but the journal title is in italics. So watch out for that. Now the first number here, that's also in italics, that's the volume number. That's also in italics. And then here you have in brackets, the issue number. So that's normal, not italics. You have a comma after this. And then here you have your page range and this is a print journal so that's all you need remember to review you have author or authors the year i won't underline so it won't confuse you with the italics author year the article title the journal title in italics it goes all the way here the volume of the journal the issue of the journal and the page range and all this is in your references. Now, because we have two sources, your references would look a little bigger. Mind you, because we're using PowerPoint, it's not in double space, but the hanging indent is there. So we got hanging indent going on here. That's good. I want you to know there's something else as well. The first letter of the first word Usually, the author's last name. Whoop. In this case, we have F for Fraser, N for Nelson. And these are put into alphabetical order. Think of your references as a sort of index. It doesn't tell you where in the article you can find the sources, like a book would, but it tells the reader how to find the sources themselves. And APA has decided to group these in alphabetical order to help you find them more easily. Okay, so again, that would be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. Okay. And if you have the same first letter, I'll pick C. Let's say you have Chan, Cantonese, and Chen, Mandarin. C, H, those are the same, but you have A. A goes before E, so that's first. Okay, same with if you had Chang. Well, it's C-H-A-N with nothing, and then C-H-A-N-G, so that would go in between Chan and Chen, for example. Okay, so that's the author's name. And you'd list all the references in alphabetical order, double space, and hanging indent. So as we work with more sources, your references will get bigger, but you always want to keep it in alphabetical order double space and hanging in dense okay moving on more sources to cover this one is an online journal you'll be reading these a lot so you can find these in the ubc library database and you would read something like this here we have a long title. It's probably the entire first line here or just this one. But either way, 
that's the title of the article and then you have the authors here which you'll have to rewrite and then you have the journal you'd have the year you'd have the volume and issue and then you'd have the page range and the reason I'm showing you this is it is better in the long run for you to write it now there are options where you can click a site option but write your source your citations this way you know what rules to use and how to use the rules properly it will take you longer to practice but it's worth it so when you got all the parts this is what it would look like you have two authors this time so you have the authors so this would read last name and then initials and then you have the end you use the symbol instead if it's two authors there's no comma you just use the and symbol and then last name again for the second author and then initials okay then you have the year as usual it's the same type of journal but this one is online so you need more things this one is your article title the green is your journal title and remember that's in italics okay and then you have the volume here which is also in italics you have the issue in brackets then you have the page range here and then this last part in blue this is like your link because it's online so you have a link so DOI stands for digital object identifier okay this is like your URL or DOI you're going to need this to show the reader where they can find it on the computer because it's an online source an online journal article okay and then you include everything else the when the year the article what it is the author the who right here and then you have where they find it in the journal and also where they can find it online so adding this to the reference you'll see that we start with a and then we go with F and then N. So again, remember, this is alphabetical order. Not the order that you found the articles or the order that you set it in, but in alphabetical order by the first letter of the first word. Again, I just told you as well, uh, if the first word, first letters are the same, go with the second letter. And if, the, if that's the same too, go with the third letter and so on. But generally, the first letter of the first word is enough. Like A, F, and N. You group your sources that way. And remember the hanging indent. The first line is not indented. So with each new line that is not indented, that's your source. So this would be 1, A, 2, and 3. Again, alphabetical order. Can't stress that enough. Make sure to also double space and hanging indent. Okay, 
is it's different journal. This time there's no DOI. Again, we have title. So this is practice now of the article. We have the author. We have the journal. We have the year. We have the volume. Or the date rather, because it has autumn too. Volume. That's going to be italics, remember. The journal is going to be in italics. We have the issue. That's going to be in brackets. And then you have the page range. Now the 11P, you might see that. That's just the number of pages you're going to need. That's more for you. So you know how many you want to print out or how much you have to read. Again, this is the information you need for citing the source in the references section. All of this, all of this you need. And if you want to test yourself, see which ones out of these you need for your in-text citation. Just in case, you're going to need the author, you're going to probably need the title, but you're always going to need the year and a page if you are quoting. Okay? So, with all that information, if you don't have a DOI, you use the URL instead. So this part right here is the URL and you need to write the words retrieve from. So it'll be retrieved from and then you write URL. Like that. Include these words in there. Everything else is the same for journals, author, year, the article, the journal in italics, the volume in italics, the issue in brackets, and then the page range. The first page that you read from that article to the last page of that article. And then make sure to write, I'll clean this up, retrieved from, and then the whole website link called the URL. So to review, if you have a DOI, DOI, Digital Object Identifier, which is going to look like numbers, it's like a code, you don't need to write retrieve from, just write D. O I and then the code with the URL you need to write retrieve from to say oh it's going to be from the internet the URL and then copy and paste the whole website link and that's the URL right there everything else is the same for journal articles online with the digital object identifier or just the URL. Okay, so your references look even bigger now. Again, alphabetical order, Anderson. Now notice, if multiple authors, I just want to tell you this, do not put the author's names in alphabetical order. Just keep the same order in the article. is the key in the article. But in your references, change the order to match alphabetical order in your references. Order of sources, not authors. Authors are 
the same order. What you see is what you get, even if it's a Z first. But if it's a Z, then you put that source at the bottom, Z, in your references. Okay, remember, make sure you put all the parts. Make sure to be using double space and hanging indent. Okay, other situations, just to name a few of these. It's a book and it's an editor that made the book, not the author. So you use E dot D, E D dot for editor. So to say this person is not the author. An ebook is an electronic book, so it's an online source. Everything here is the same as the book, but because it's an ebook, you have retrieve from and then the URL that you copy and paste. Put these separately. And this is the last slide for today's lectures. Here again, we keep alphabetical order. We're only using two sources this time. But notice here, this is what I was talking about. If you have multiple authors in the source, up to 10 authors, you have to list all 10 of them. So, but notice this one starts with a P. There are other last names in the article that has A and M. Uh, and another A, and an S, and a B. So, authors in the article they are not in alphabetical order. It's just whatever order you see, that's, you keep the same order. Keep the order that you see. Don't change it. But with the sources, you organize them in alphabetical order. Okay, so to review, in your references, I'll clean this up. In your references, you always want to include the who, that's the author or authors. You always want to include the where, so that has more information now. That can be things like uh, the book, the publisher, if it's a book. It can be a journal if it's a journal. You're going to have like volume and issue. And if it's an online source, you'd have DOI or retrieve from URL, right? Uh, if you have the what, well, you have the title. And that's the title of the article or book. And then you have the who, what, when, when you have the year that's important right make sure to include all these things some of these you include in your in-text citation so i'll underline the ones you want to include that's the author and oh before i forget I'm going to need page range too Page range, ooh, what the? So in text citation, you're going to need author, page, year, and the title. And for your references, you're going to need everything. You need author, you need page, range, notice the difference, page number in the in-text citation if you're quoting, page range for your references, 
you need the year You also need the article title, but you also need things like publisher, journal, and everything that comes with that, volume and issue, okay? And you're going to need things like DOI, URL, I'll just write it down here for you, volume or issue, okay? So, yeah. Review this lecture slide, review the APA citation guide, practice with the sources for your research proposal. That's why I recommend and strongly recommend you practice this. So make sure you practice, practice, practice. Practice for assignment free, your research proposal. It's going to save you a lot of time for assignment four which is your essay, which requires you to do a reference anyway. So that's it for today's lecture. If you have any questions, you can post in week four's discussion forum or email me directly. Make sure you check out all the other sources. This is a very heavy day for you, um, but it's a good time to start practicing your in-text citation and references for your research proposal. All right, see you next time.